Hello. Hey, Sam Pimp. Hey, Michelle, how you doing? Yeah, I, I haven't had it, but most of the town has. All over town, it's a mess. All the restaurants are closed. Trees got knocked over. All night long. Going to get it again later today. Today is hotter than hell. Yesterday was, but not this bad. So today's the last day of it. I got a, I got like 90 minutes of really good audio last night. It just sounded like the end of the world. Yeah, it's really good. Great, really. We got like 70 mile an hour winds. I had that tripod weighted down on a big, heavy, heavy, uh, a heavy duty tripod, and I had it low to the ground. I only had a GoPro on it. It's not like there was some big, giant camera on there that the wind could have caught, but it still blew it over. It spreads way out. Uh, I love storms, but now when it messes up everybody's stuff. Oh, it said on the heading power out. 75% of the power out. No, wind is crazy. It's interesting how, you know, you would think down low, you know, you're close to the ground, with, you know, air is thick. And, you know, if you looked at this tripod and you lifted it, you would think there's no way it's going to get blown over without a big camera on it. But it blew it over. I wish it wouldn't have, but I still got some pretty good audio. Hey, Stephanie. All the fast food closed. Walmart's been closed. Second day, gas stations. People are using generators to keep their food from freezing or thawing. I mean, oh, the traffic lights are out. It's a mess down there. Uh, Seventy-five. Well, hundred percent. Oh no, sorry about that. Last night, it woke me up about three times, all night long, thunder and lightning. Nope. I got a time lapse going now just because we're supposed to get nailed again today, later today. I'm telling you guys, get that, get that application. My radar is so good. I'll tell you one thing I learned. You thought I would... Uh, known this before now, you know, flying planes and all that stuff. But to be honest with you, you think that pilots would like know all sorts of stuff about weather. I mean, you know, not really. I mean, you learn it, it's on the test, they teach you. And basically, when you're just a recreational pilot like I was, you're looking for the big orange dot and you stay the hell away from it. You know what I mean? It's not like you're trying to forecast weather or speculate what it's going to be like between reporting points. I mean, you do know weather and, you know, you're trying the hell to stay out of the big orange bright blinking spot, that kind of shit. But I've always had an interest in weather, particularly relative humidity. I like winter a lot. But anyway, uh, what I've noticed with this app is, you know, you think, how are these places getting their ass handed to them and nobody's always predicting it? Well, weather's hard to predict to begin with. But I'll tell you what I've noticed happens is like, First of all, they don't forecast thunderstorms. They'll forecast rain, but if you pay attention, it's not thunderstorms, which is a consequence of, you know, hot, moist air, that kind of thing. But I've noticed in watching this app, what happens, they, you'll, you'll tune in and they'll say that there's thunderstorms here, there's thunderstorms there, and you're looking around. And what happens is like in this case, the wind's been coming out of the Southwest. So I'll watch him on this radar app and it shows discharge, which is where you get the red for the intensity of the storm. And what will happen is it'll like, let's say it starts down around the southwest corner of Michigan or over near Fay's house, Wisconsin, cuts across the lake. You'll see them sometimes they're strong when they're in Wisconsin. They slow down. You don't see much orange as it crosses Lake Michigan. And then sometimes you don't see any more orange at all. And it comes all the way across the upper part of Michigan, heads out over 
lake here and you, you get rain, but it's not what you think. But I've noticed on like days like yesterday, what happens is you'll see these small storms are not big and you'll see it start to get red then it'll get a little bigger and then it'll go all the green, red, greens all over the place for maybe up to 200 miles. And then sometimes the conditions are just right in a small area where it like all of a sudden goes to a large area red. And that's what happened here. But there's no way of predicting that. So they don't want to cry wolf. But that's what happened last night. It was green, a little bit of red, green, a little bit of red. And then when it was about two miles south of here with a big spot of red. So the conditions were just right for a lot of electrical discharge, which is why there was so much lightning. So it came into West Branch, beat the shit out everywhere, got east of here, and then calmed down again. But, you know, everybody's critical of the weather reporting systems. It's like, why aren't you giving us a better notice? Well, that's why. It wasn't there five minutes before it hit. It was just rain. And I never knew that until lately. I mean, I knew that storms intensified and weakened, but I never got to see it like that on, on an app. I love this, my radar. Yeah, we had the internet problems yesterday. Yeah. See you, Michelle. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, we didn't have any until just the last couple of days, but these have been real. I mean, it's a mess around here. I went over to the uh, golf course behind me, and uh, it's just soaked. Of course, they're not allowing anybody to golf. I mean, I don't know how much rain we got. It wasn't that much rain, but the lightning and thunder was through the charts. I'm rendering up. Basically, here, here's what I do. on these. Like, I like audio storms, right? Bird singing, waterfalls. I really almost would rather have it than video sometimes. And, you know, this GoPro, if you can put it out there and it, it can get soaking wet and it doesn't hurt it. So I, that's what I use. So just in case there are some good strikes of lightning, I shoot on 4K cinematic mode, which doesn't give me a hell of a lot of battery time. But what I get is good. So I'm right now I'm rendering 95 minutes of like, killer audio with some lightning strikes. Now, a lot of people find those boring. I like plugging them in and just listening to them laying in bed. I certainly don't watch them when, you know, the main goal was audio. But I got a go on it last night. It was like that all night long. Oh, you got a cold spell? Wow. I was in Chicago for the second and third worst snowstorms. It was so great. Now, people don't realize it. Well, not all people, but some people. But it's this hot weather that wrecks your battery in your car. You'll see a lot of people having a hard time starting their car today, and it doesn't make sense to them. Now, you'll notice a battery that gets worn out, not cranky in cold weather. But the real damage to a battery is on days like today. It's super tough on a battery. And you'll see people in parking lots with their hood up, and they can't figure out why it's 90 degrees out and their car doesn't start. That's because this heat's been chipping away at those cells. And once you get a battery and those plates are that far gone, you're not, it's over. You've got to get another battery. You're not charging it up. It's just the way it is. I see it happen all the time. I've even seen like tow truck companies, they'll be jumping somebody, starts right up, take the cables off, 30 seconds later it quits. I've seen them do it five times, like, hey, it's none of my business, but that battery is not getting any better. There's no way around it. You need a new battery. Oh, good for you, Watson. So that's a contained unit. Yeah, I don't make stuff like that anymore. I bet it's a, I bet it, you can watch that electric meter spin around like a top. And I bet you've got Freon in that too, a closed system with Freon. Not this new boat, environmentally friendly stuff. That's why. Yep. Yeah, they are. Batteries are expensive too. 
shit, you're not going into uh, Walmart like you used to and getting the battery for four bucks, 40 bucks. It's more like 125. And then you got all these extra fees for disposal and that kind of stuff, which I'm fine with. Yeah, old school, definitely. You'll see people cheating with, on airplanes a lot. Uh, using Freon in the old systems, even though they're not supposed to. Yeah, because the new cooling isn't as good. It's, it's, it's uh, better for the environment, but you'll be hot. Most recreational small planes don't have air conditioning. It's a pain in the ass. It's hard to fit in there. It doesn't work for shit usually until you're you don't need it anymore because you're you know you're at altitude and you can open the window. You can count on two degrees per thousand feet Fahrenheit as you climb. So every thousand feet it gets two degrees cooler. So on 90 degree days like that, if you're in a piston normally aspirated small airplane, you're sweating your ass off the whole goddamn day because you're never going to get high enough to get it that much cooler. Yeah. But really all AC units are really dehumidifiers automatically. No. Nope. Great cloud watching lately. This really, I want to, I want to take my kayak out. I held my kayak like a baby when the strong winds came. See, now that's the, here's the weird thing about this. Here, this big, heavy uh, tripod tips over with just a little GoPro on the top. And that kayak, which only weighs 43 pounds, sat there the whole time and didn't move an inch. It's all how the wind hits it, the resistance. You know, it's pointed, that helps. And it was pointing right into the wind. But so was the damn tripod. Yeah. Hey, Hank. Yeah, I mean, I do 4K. You know, I see on the new GoPro, I guess that's going to be uh, doing 60T at 5.3K, the GoPro 10, which is a pain in the ass. I think, I mean, I've, I've got all sorts of external hard drives because I do everything in 4K. Oh, a separate part that runs it. Really? I never heard of that before. Huh. You know, today the relative humidity is way high. You'll notice uh, you don't see a lot of birds flying around. I see these stupid asses walking their dogs. I see people jogging in this. That's how dumb they are. You know how hard this is on your body? This is not like uh, marine uh, commando training. This is like stupid to run in this weather. It's a perfect time if you're older to have a heart attack. Hey, Logan. How did that flooded area uh, do up in North Carolina sector? They getting it together? An air air uh, aircraft performance like on a day like today is in the tank, man. There will be people someplace, somewhere, not getting off the runway and flying into a big stand of trees or clipping a building because of dents in the altitude. Hot, humid weather like today, particularly on propeller-driven airplanes, just a killer on aircraft performance. Today, you would want to be turbocharged, which is why you see a lot of turbocharged airplanes out west. Oh, it's still a mess. Oh. Hey, Jesus, how you doing? The 
it's humid as hell. 87, I think the humidity is like 94 or something. Oh, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. We get some good audio. Okay, video. I just went to get a coffee and it was too busy today because everything at the exit is out of power. So they came down. So I took off and I thought I'd take a little ride, but I realized early that it'd be too hot for Daisy. Of all the dogs I've ever had, Daisy, now if I can leave her here, it's no big deal, but I, I can't leave her other places. She goes crazy. You wonder what goes through their little mind. Their big mind, little brain. Yeah, that's what it is, 87 here right now. A little cold front. No, uh, are you shitting me? Wow. Now, I'll tell you when Florida is nice, you know, as you know, I'm not a big fan of Florida. And that is when the sun goes down, going to the beach. Just to sit there on a chair and look at those waves, not be cold. Beautiful. No, I don't because I know what she's doing. I don't, I don't think that that'd be that great. She gets under the bed and she gets on top of the bed and, you know, I, I don't, you know, it isn't like she's looking through my porn collection. I, I don't think it'd be that interesting, really. People think that, you know, I ought to put a camera on her out in the woods. Well, I know what she's seeing, you know, and I just, it's not like she's going to places that I don't see. So I just never, I got around to doing it. Yeah, can you imagine getting all your stuff soaked like that? Yeah. I, just like the Mississippi Delta, all the way from like Hannibal. I spent a lot of times in Hannibal, Missouri. Mark Twain was from. They used to have a big marble get together there once a year. And uh, Hannibal, all the way down, all the way to where it empties in New Orleans, just like constant flooding. I don't know why anybody would live there. I love Tunica, Mississippi. Feel bad for that place. I was there in the glory days when gambling just made it to Mississippi. And now it's like sucks. You know, this would be a this would be a big money day today for restaurants. But they got screwed out of it. Yeah, Hilton Head, yeah. That's how she was in Hilton Head. There we go, yeah. You know, you wonder uh, what she's thinking. Yeah, when she was at Hilton Head, and when I came back that day, if they said that she was freaking out, we took her in the pickup later, and she actually fell asleep in my lap upside down. So she wasn't getting any rest, stressing out. Hey, there you go. How you doing? Oh my God, Grand Isle? Wow, God, what a mess. I wouldn't want my house back after water went through it like that. Yeah, no way. I'm reading a really good book on salmon. I read about 44 pages last night. Really interesting. As it turns out, salmon are a great barometer on the healthiness of an area. When you think of salmon, man, how they, they're all over the world and how they change from freshwater to saltwater and go back and spawn, change their looks and their color, and it's crazy. Here you go. Yeah, I know. I saw that. I feel bad for those people. Hurricanes are exciting, though. I mean, I, I would, if I could go to a place where I could have like a, a stainless steel little home, you know, I would go to move, and they had a lot of hurricanes. I would move there. I just love storms. I got about six people that said, want me to, said I can babysit their house in Hilton Head. If they 
if a hurricane comes, which I'd be happy to do. I think it'd be cool. Yeah, probably on Dave, yeah. So you wonder what these animals are just, you know, they say in order for conscious thought, you have to have a language. And, you know, she, I'm assuming she's not thinking in a language, but you wonder how they put that together. Yeah, it's a hot one here. But if you've ever, uh, I was in Hugo, actually, the tail end of it, and a couple others, but I lived 20 miles inland. But I would try to get down to the shore if I could during a hurricane. I'll tell you another weird thing. You know, I told you how this uh, tripod blew over, but I drove around for about a half hour today. Not one stalk of corn blown over. Go figure. Trees blowing over, signs, little buildings, that kind of thing. But not one stalk of corn blow blown over. And that has all sorts of resistance, all those leaves sticking out. Will somebody explain that to me? You think you'd see like hundreds of yards of corn on its side? Nothing, zero. Yeah, I caught the tail under. That's what I meant to say, Andrew. I know bird breeders that lost uh, $800,000 of bird down around Miami, Andrew hit. This sounds crazy, but I had one guy call me, ask me what would I would do. This takes big balls. I said, this is going to take some balls. I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd open all the cages. And that's what he did. I'd open, I would open all the cages and wish him best, best of luck. Yeah, it must be. It must be uh, Jeff. Hey, Blue, how you doing? Yeah, that's true, Frisky, yeah. But if you've got a lot of money tied up in birds and you know you're going to get nailed like that, the writing was on the wall with Hugo. That's what I, that's, I, I'm not a, telling somebody to do something that I wouldn't do. It takes a lot of nuts to open the door on a cage of breeding hyacinth macaws that are worth $24,000. It really is. I mean, you talk about a decision to make. You got about half of them back. Now, you can look at it in the non-emotional sense, and you can look at it like... Uh, the economic sense. So it made sense either way. But when you're faced with it, you start thinking, well, maybe it'll calm down. These are pretty, yeah, Parrot Jungle, actually, my veterinarian, everybody's veterinarian down there is still the vet for Parrot Jungle. Susan Club, you can look her up. Yeah, Susan Club, C L U B B. It's a sweetheart of a lady. Her and Kevin, her husband. Uh, she's a world renowned vet, Susan, sweetheart. But, you know, I used to see her and her husband. I mean, I knew them because she was the vet I used. And you'd see her and Kevin holding hands. And I remember my wife saying to me one time, See, if you work on a relationship, what can happen? Well, they got divorced, and it was a bitter divorce. I felt bad. Kevin's kind of a nice looking guy. He had a graduate degree in chemistry from Auburn. That's where he had met Susan. And somehow, some way, he met some lady teaching English to Japanese on the internet. I mean, I don't know all the details. I'm not saying anything negative about them, but they got divorced. And Susan still runs her veterinarian clinic, although when, you know, the economy tanked, uh, it was pretty tough. Even though you're a world-renowned vet of parrots, uh, when you got breeders getting out of the business left and right, you know, you got bills to pay, right? Not everybody has 800 pairs of birds. So uh, she went to hamsters and reptiles and any other damn thing she could treat. 
which I'm happy for. I think it's called uh, Rainbow Aviary. There's some name for it, Rainbow Aviaries or something like that. There's some like tropical like type name, but Susan's a sweetheart. When they were getting divorced, she was forced to sell a bunch of hurricane aviaries. That's aviaries. That's what it is. When she was for when they got divorced, they had to like sell some of their birds. And just like on YouTube, you get these crazy, crazy PETA motherfuckers, you know, saying that how can you go to vet school and keep parrots in a cage? And they drove her absolutely nuts. Yeah, if you're ever down there, uh, if you're ever down to Parrot Jungle, uh, you know, that's a Jewish operation. <laughs> Not that that has anything to do with it. Ask if Susan Club's there. You, you would love to meet her. She's a sweet person, really educated, nice, great vet. Didn't rip people off. So, all right, so hello. She can tell you about Moses and Delilah Law, the people that I put a link to that run Unsolved Mysteries. Susan was their vet, too. Yep, she knows everybody. She knows Daryl. She was friends with Howard Horn. He's since deceased. Yeah, it was crazy times. And when I didn't move down there, it was still expensive. It was $10,000 an acre in 92. But it was all dirt roads. Now it's all like steakhouses and paved roads and crazy money. You'd have to be out of your goddamn mind to pay that. I don't really care. I mean, my wife still lives there and she likes it. I don't know why. She's building a new $550,000 custom horse stall like deal where the bride and groom can bang up in the upstairs and have their horses in the downstairs. And there's a separate spot where you can have like these wedding receptions. Yeah. And so I, they want to, I did a little work for the mother. It was really, uh, and they were supposed to interview me, but I was up in Detroit and I didn't really care about it. About that time, I realized what a big mistake I'd made by getting into that business. And I was so turned off on doing any investigative work. I mean, I was putting out fires all damn day long. Last thing I wanted to do was talk about missing people or help. I did, as I said before, I did go down to uh, Miami for the sheriff's department looking for some hyacinth, but they were not there. Now, Florida's a weird state, man. Yeah, Frisky, it's, I put a video up on it the other day. If you look, it says scroll to the 1359 mark. I put a link to that episode just about four days ago. What I say, my neighbors were missing. Yeah, it's on there. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm not really big on that. But, you know, she asked me to come on and wanted to address a couple things. I mean, anything I can do to put a cherry on the top about these crazy stock and troublemaking lunatics. I hope she ends up in jail one of these days. She deserves it. Yeah, I mean... Uh, there were a lot of weird things that happened down there, man. Florida is weird. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it or you can see it in that link that I put up. People have been asking me. That's why I put up the link. Yeah. There was all these weird shit going on down there. You know, I got down there at the end of the dope days. I got one of the last uh, wild caught groups of African greys from Guyana. Actually, the laws were from Guyana. And Lila's mother had been involved in bird breeding. I think I bought 50 pairs of Congo, the big African greys, not the tin of the small ones. And there was a Greek vet that was like the guy that they would go into like pet, a place, I think it was called Pet Station, where they go into quarantine. But I got one of the last wild caught imports from Guyana. Yeah, they were 
That was weird. Uh, and by the way, I didn't know Laws at all. I had never met them. I had seen him and there was a mailbox, et cetera, where I had a PO box. I saw him in there a couple of times. I knew they were bird breeders, but I never met him. L-A-L-L, yeah, pretty sure, L-A-L-L. If you look on, I just uploaded a thing about a week ago. It says scroll to 1359. You won't have to go back through many videos. And I put a link to the Unsolved Mysteries. Yeah. Hey, Tammy. Want me to cut the grass today? Yeah, there are some, yeah. And then uh, there was a guy that, uh, there were some big players in bird breeding. Susan, uh, if you look, you'll see a, uh, she's published a couple books. She's got a big uh, black palm cockatoo on the cover. Parrot something. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right, Cynthia. Well, I mean, when I got into it, I mean, my, I was naive and stupid, and I thought that I would, like, provide these quality birds and truck. You'll never meet a bigger bunch of scumbags in your life than people that own pet shops. They're one notch low, lower than drug dealers. Don't pay bills. Don't treat the animals right. They'll sell sick animals. Overall, they're a bunch of shit bags. I'm surprised Nitty doesn't own a pet shop. He'd be perfect. Isn't that crazy, Mom? Yeah, I'm videotaping it right now. Oh, that's cool. I don't think they build up the dirt around here. I think that may happen as a result of a planner going through, but I don't think it's intentional. Yeah, it was a bad experience. I, I finally got to where I was selling birds a week old because I just there's so many babies in the spring, hand feeding these babies going crazy. I would have like tubs, plastic tubs of like all sorts of different parrots. I'd have to feed them all the time. Yeah, it was not a good idea. I, I did it with koi for a while. Uh, camels, dromedary, single hump. Yeah, my, my that was a big mistake. Time to time, I still think of getting into fantail guppies, believe it or not. <laughs> or neons, but I'm just not into like, something changes. I don't care if it's a fish, an insect. I was gonna get into leeches for debriding for burn pa patients until I found out you had to kill the leeches after they did their job. I thought, fuck that, no way. You're like mother nature, you know, arguably saves chronic infection with a burn patient and you kill it afterwards, no way, not happening. Then I looked into maggots, same thing. Uh, I'm not doing that. No, not doing it. Same reason I don't fish any or hunt anymore. I almost got to get a permit to breed Queen Bavaria and Conyers. They were on the endangered species list. At the end, I didn't get approved. I would have been interested in that. You know, I don't know anything about that, Mary. I've never heard of that. I don't know anything about it. No, it doesn't, Brisky. No way. Yeah, the deer, I, I mean, I love deer. I worked at a wildlife rehab and got to nurse, uh, I think, about 14 of them back to health. When I worked there, I got to hand feed loons, deer, raccoons, blue herons, you name it. It's a great experience. 
And that place ended up turning me off. So they didn't know that much about birds. And I had, you know, I'm not saying I'm an expert, but after all, I did do it for a long time. And uh, they had some baby robins that somebody brought in. That their ma got killed by a cat or something. And there was a fan blowing in there. And they said, hey, you can't have this fan blowing on these birds. You know, a big thing with baby birds is hypothermia, a disproportionate amount of heat leaving the body. You don't need to be in an ice cream freezer to die of hypothermia. And I told him, I turned off the fan. Some fucker turned it back on. The next day I went in, they were all dead. And that was it for me. It's like, uh-uh, not doing this. I told you dumbasses what was going to happen. I mean, here birds are taken to a place to make it, so I quit right then and there. Yeah, totally sensitive, yeah. It, it was, I mean, it was better than not, but I'm telling you, man, if you ever work in the, you see the place, and we had shit getting out all the time. I mean, nuts, man. People trying to sneak in there and steal stuff. We had a damn uh, skunk burrow under a crow cage one night, ate 10 crows. Yeah, it's just crazy shit. People dealing with people is a pain in the ass. They bring in like a fawn. It's like, hey, you dumbass, you should have left it there. There's nothing worse than an ignorant do-gooder. Usually the mother's around. Unless you see that mother hit by a car on the side of the road and the fawn's standing out there, leave it alone. Oh, I didn't know that about kittens. Huh. And, you know, then you got the other side of the coin. We have the Mississauga rattler. It's Michigan's only venomous snake, and it's on the endangered species list. And part of the reason for that is because of idiots killing them when they see them. You go down to the Arboretum down in Ann Arbor. they got a big giant sign. Do not walk barefoot. You think you can tell these college kids that? About two of them get bit every spring. They don't even make the anti-venom anymore for the Mississauga rattler. And when they did, you, go, you get bit by a Mississauga rattler, small venomous state. You know what your bill is going to be? I can tell you right now. This is the last I knew, and I'm sure it didn't go down. $140,000. I don't think those loons uh, made out this summer. I never saw the babies. That doesn't mean they didn't have any, but the, the hen got here late. Uh, I never really saw her that much, and I haven't heard them call them in a long time. I think they took off. Happens, you know. I'm telling you, the mortality rate of breeding birds is very high. You've got everything trying to kill you from here and there. Wind, water, and disease, food, and cold, every other damn thing. Raccoons want to eat your eggs and stuff. You watch a loon fly, and that is pure energy. It must cut, they must have to stop every hour to get something to eat. That's like a bowling ball with short wings. They quit flapping their wings for a half second, they'd hit the dust. The sandhill crane or a uh, a sandhill crane? Yeah, they're, they'll be heading their way. I've, I've watched them spiral all the way up 10,000, 12,000 feet and then head south. They just lift their wings. They lift right off the ground. There's a ton of those down at Nianque. Uh, yeah, everything. Gas stations, barn, all the fast foods, grocery stores. Yeah, they're all closed. Uh, stop traffic lights aren't working. No, they can sure swim like hell underwater, though, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, if the loon went crazy and ran India underwater, you'd break your leg. That's all legs, too. It's no wings. It's not like a penguin. All pure legs. If you go on YouTube, there's some guy, Lucky Bastard. He, he got some good video of uh, loon swimming around. 
They're fast. Honey is 3% hydrogen peroxide and it seals the wound. I don't think it would kill a flesh eating virus because everything is dormant. Everything's dormant. I, I would be surprised if that is true. Yeah, hydrogen peroxide is true, you're right, yeah. You hear that, Prisky? Yeah, those sandhill cranes are all, you know, they were, Michigan was close to opening up the season on them. Just like the uh, rich housewife in West Bloomfield that wants to save all the wolves. She wants to save them because she has it made and she's not breeding livestock in the UP and waking up in the morning and your whole goddamn inventory has been eaten by wolves. So it all depends on what side of the equation you're on. You would hate sandhill cranes if you were a farmer. They will sit down there right after you plant seeds and walk down a whole row and eat every damn one of them while you watch. If you're a, a seed farmer in the spring, you're going to look at sandhill cranes much differently than one blinking at you at the marina. Yeah, I mean, look, I read, I was into beekeeping for a long time. And people, you know, I've had everything say it's going to make their breasts firmer and live longer. I mean, first, actually, honey is worse for your teeth than table sugar. There's an enzyme in there that'll eat away at your enamel quicker than table sugar. I, I get so tired of hearing this bullshit about honey because it's natural. I mean, honey is all right. I'm not a big honey eater. I put it in tea once in a while, but these damn wives' tales that get spread out there, I mean, they're doing everything with honey, but selling it for impotence. Nuts. Hydrogen peroxide is in honey. No, Mama Mary knows the blue heron from a sandhill crane. I just saw a kestrel take a take a sparrow out about two weeks ago when I was sitting in the Walmart parking lot. See, Mary can take the feathers because she's half Indian. If anybody else takes them, that's a felony. Felony. Yeah, blue and they're amazing. That's another, there's another example. Yeah, blue heron are great. Until you have a koi pond and you get $1,500 worth of koi delivered and they're all gone three days later because of a blue heron and its friends. They will clean out a pond in no time. Oh, thank you, regular show. Hey, Penny. So this is like anything in life, right? What side of the fence are you on? No kidding. And they'll eat anything, rats, snakes. They're not just looking for fish. Mary, was it a sandhill crane or a blue heron? No, we, I have power, but most of the place doesn't, no. Yeah, it's true. Hydrogen, uh, hydrogen peroxide will kill healthy tissue out of the bottle. Oh, okay. You should have used that uh, ancient soft-footed method. There's got to be some secret, you know, you're not telling us. Like crouching down and like, you know, like an owl flying through the air, you don't hear it. Come on, tell us your secrets. You probably could have snuck up behind that thing and petted him on the back of the head. Yeah, we're going to get nailed today. Yeah, you're right about that, Colin Bear. Yeah.
Come on. You know, I was down in Florida one time, and now our cormorant, you know, you see them around the lakes. They'll clean out a lake, too. They can eat a ton of fish. It is related to the ahinga in Florida. And one time, but they have to dry their wings before they can fly. Anyway, long story short, down in Florida, raining like a son of a bitch. At an intersection, power's out, cars are stopped, and here is an ahinga with his wings soaked in the middle of an intersection. So I put on my four ways, get out, grab this ahinga, and put him in my car. You know, I'm gonna get him out of there, let him dry his feet. You know that fucker stuck me in the head with his beak in my forehead? And it took me a minute and a half to get it out. The end of their beak is like uh, barbed. I'm not shitting you. He's flapping around, blood's coming out of my forehead. Oh, good for you, Mary. Yeah, no kidding. Anyway, I took him home, dried him off, let him go. Had a big old scar on my forehead for about four years. No good deed goes unpunished. Yeah, they 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 were thinking about opening up a season on those too, because all the fish they eat. I'm telling you, the more I'm reading about salmon, the more I'm reading about how it was a bad idea in the Great Lakes. Yeah, stuck in my forehead. Yeah, I had a hard time getting it out. It wasn't just like a little pinprick. That bird's flapping around. This thing stuck in my head. Yeah. Should have broke his goddamn neck. I thought about it. Yeah, I know. It's not a good experience. I'll tell you another weird thing. I had a neighbor that had a horse that got out. I don't know shit about horses. They don't really interest me, right? So anyway, I had a bridle on it. So I, I go over to grab the goddamn thing before it goes out on the road. I don't have any food. I'm taking it back to the damn thing and I let it in this like little enclosure in the back where the gate had opened. And just as I let it go, we're standing next to the barn. That horse kicked. And that damn horse ended up dislodging like a four by four that was part of the structure. And it wasn't two inches from my head. Uh, it would have killed me for sure. I don't know whether he was excited he was home or pissed off that I got him or what, but it, I let it go and right then he like kicked like all four feet off the ground, like instantaneously. And that I could hear it. That hoof sailed right by my ear. No shit. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not really into horses. I I know a guy. I was really into photography for a while, and I I met him through selling some stuff and. His sister-in-law was the CEO of some big company. Got busted having an affair with the vice president or something, so they gave her a severance package. And she went out to Montana and bought a horse farm. It was her dream. You know, she had a ton of money. It was like a million bucks, and this was 30 years ago. She wasn't out there a week, and a horse fucked her off, and she hit her head on a rock and spent the rest of her life in an assisted living care facility until she died. Couldn't even feed herself. No shit. He died too. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. You never know, man, what life's got in store for you. I was thinking of that today, that poor little girl that drowned over in uh, Taos. You go up there for a nice summer vacation, you know, and you go home. Can you imagine that? You go up there, you have your kid with you, 
you're up there to have a good time, and all of a sudden your kid drowns, you're freaking the hell out, you can't find them, the rescue gets there, they, you watch them pull her body out of there, and then what do you do, just drive home? Like, you come home, pull in the driveway, and like, she's not with you, it's got to be just super traumatic, and then start planning a funeral and stuff, my God, you talk about a tragic situation, all with the expectation of having a fun summer day. God. See, these winds are cropping up here. No, I'm not a horse guy. When I was a kid, there were people on the other side of town, and I lived, it wasn't, it, they, 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 they were in a part of town where you could have horses. It was crazy. It's probably not like that anymore. Their name was Shotwells. We go over there and ride these damn ponies bareback. And these horses would, these ponies, you'd get on them and you'd be riding. And all of a sudden it would stop and you'd fly off the front. We didn't think anything, you know, we thought it was a pain in the ass, get back on. And then they get you and they go and they would run you along the electric fence, your leg. So then you get smart and you start like, as they headed over there, you pull up your leg and you like be balancing on the top. It's amazing I'm not a quadriplegic because of that. Hey, Conan, how you doing? See, now on a hot day today, as I said earlier, this is what really affects a battery. And these GoPro batteries don't last for shit on a hot day like today. Yeah, no kidding. Yep. Yeah, they were smart, though, I'll tell you that. Smart. You know, I think I told you before, I filled in as an elephant trainer on a Universal and All Black Circus back in 93. And I knew those, I didn't know them, but they got a hold of me because of camel breeding. And, I, and one guy had a heart attack, another guy got killed in a car wreck. So I was, I got to be an elephant trainer for two weeks. And it was so, such a great experience. I have some pictures, but not a lot, because believe it or not, they were always a little bit suspicious that I may have been like an undercover person for PETA. And I, normally I would have had a million pictures. It was such a great experience. But they, they were always worried about someone infiltrating. And, and I, I probably got like 20 pictures. I got, I got a book. And I, I, you know, I, I, find, I, don't, I don't look up those elephants because I, I don't want to be depressed about it. I don't know what the hell happened to them. I know for a while Stroh's had purchased them, Stroh's Beer Company. And, uh, but that experience, getting to know those elephants, that guy told me the second day there that you're going to learn really early if they like you or not. And uh, what they would do if they didn't like you, who knows why, right? They would wait till you got in their stall where, you, where they had them. And they would lean up against you until you screamed. And then whoever it was, they just can them right there and said, like, hey, this is like the biggest warning you could ever have. Uh, they were always nice to me, but I kissed their damn ass, man. I was petting them, bringing them candy. You know what they got at the end of a good performance with no problem? You know what they got? You're not going to believe it. A can of light beer. They'd crush it in their mouth and spit the can out can of light beer at the end of the day. I'll tell you another thing that's surprising too. Of course, they do drink a lot of water, but you know, those elephants, this was 93, you know, you could feed them $3 a day. That's all the cost of hay at the time. $3 a day. That was it. Yeah, I've got a, like a book from the guy he had written. They were into elephants their whole life. There was a little, uh, we had a Dalmatian puppy that the guy had and that way they would be bugging those elephants and they would get their foot and put it right on top of this puppy's head until it started screaming and stuff and then they'd take their foot off it it was unbelievable how delicate and sensitive they were and they're always smelling you sticking that trunk around and, and those nails those nails have to be trimmed a lot it's actually a foot it's not like with toes it's not what people think just a big stump that you don't have to maintain their feet are very sensitive i got to give them baths they lay on their side roll over 
rub their face. So fun. They're all females, Indian elephants. Good time. No, that wasn't enough alcohol, but that that was their that was their treat at the end of the day. Yeah, just so huge. It, it, what's interesting is that they they you know when they try and kill you if they're really pissed, they do a headstand on you. If you look on YouTube videos, most of those old killings were of males and rut. Any big animal in rut, even a camel, try and kill your ass. Deer, you name it. You see a lot of those deer attacks on YouTube. There's two things, either it was in rut and they cornered it, or it was a deer that had been raised and had a lot of interaction with human beings because generally you can't get anywhere near a big buck. I don't care what the circumstances are. Hey, Lydia, how you doing? But I had a good experience doing that. You know, they wanted me to come back, actually, but I didn't even charge them. Believe it or not, the margins were like really low. So I didn't even like charge them. I thought this was an experience of a lifetime. I, I got to babysit chimps, tigers. When we go to an all black area, uh, we would not do the bears. Isn't that crazy? Because in general, uh, African Americans didn't want to have anything to do with bears or tigers. Isn't that crazy? So those, those were not part of the act. Hey, Roy, how you doing? But I had a good time doing it. I, I think I, I loved uh, being on the road like that and set the elephants, set up the big top tents. Seriously, pull with their trunks and pull the rope up. It's so cool. We had a semi truck, two semi trucks actually. So fun, man. Everything was like free. When you're part of like a circus, that was sponsored by HBL, Universe Soul, S O U L. Everything is free. Like if you're with the, with the circus, you eat free everywhere, everything. It's fun. Yeah, you know how they have the hook, you know, you see them. That's why there's no elephant shows anymore. I mean, uh, if I had my druthers, I, I say it's not cool to do that with elephants. But, you know, it had already been happening. At the time, it was like getting marginal on if this was going to be cool or not. I will tell you this, though, that uh, if you didn't have that hook, you lost all your authority over that elephant. Now you could say, well, you shouldn't have authority over it. I know all this stuff anyway, right? But I was just filling in, it's been going on for 50 years. And, you know, you've seen a hook and like, if you touch him with it, it would bring a drop of blood sometimes. But at the time, you know, I didn't know. I mean, I don't know anything. I'm just like fitting in and like, it's not like we're taking a 12 gauge shotgun having fun it was just like it just seemed like spurs on a horse or a whip with a tiger it's just part of it right but those elephants i mean like anything else they have a bad day and uh they will get out of line they'll be like argumentative they won't want to do this they won't want to do that and all you got to do is show them that hook i'm not shitting you their eye moves around quite a bit in that socket and they'd be doing stuff. They wouldn't want to get out of the truck. They wouldn't want to get in the truck. They were grouchy. They were pulling out the stakes in the tent. All you had to do was go over that and show them that hook. And they stopped right in their damn tracks. I'm not kidding. But that was the difference between, you know, an elephant going crazy. When I was in Ann Arbor one time, uh, somebody lit off fireworks at the airport where they were having this little mini circus. And that damn circus, that elephant took off with a lady and a baby on its head. Yeah. Hey, Deanna, how you doing? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I know. It's, it, well, times have changed now, you know? 
I mean, you know, if pigs are smarter than dogs, which they are, what does a pig think going down the highway in the trailer? That, you know, it's a birthday party. So there are plenty of things way worse. You know, not that you have to grade it all with regard to like how bad it is. That's, you know what I mean? I'll tell you, man, this guy that I got to know recently, he's like a world renowned horse and dog trainer. And you do not want to know some of the things they do to train hunting dogs. I mean, I'm not shitting you. They would get the death penalty in this day and age. But, I mean, I don't know. I guess that's what happens to produce good hunting dogs. Crazy. I don't know if that's all the time or what, but people don't really understand what, what goes on sometimes. No kidding, Indernia. Wow. Yeah, it's hotter than hell here. Most of the power is out in town. You know, luckily, I've seen a lot of monarch butterflies this year. I'm going to go out and change my battery and my GoPro. You stay here, huh? It's too hot for you, honey. Stay here, Mike. Hi, hi. Are you sweating, honey? You want to go out and go pee pee? You won't want to go out there for long. Yeah, big chat. Let's we'll see how long you stay out there. It's hotter than hell. You won't be out there long. 
Big shot wanted to test the heat out there. Yeah, we're supposed to get nailed later today. I, you know, I want from a from a storm net that videotapes everything. I want to have it happen, but from a person that's suffering from this bad bullshit, I don't want to have it happen. Oh, severe thunderstorm watch! Wowie. I get excited about it. Check my radar. Oh, we got a watch. Oh, I see Gaylord and Grayling's got big, heavy warning. Oh, we got a bunch of them on the way here, it looks like. They may miss us. Murray, are you getting killed over there right now? It looks like you would be. Or is it mostly rain? Yeah, these may not make it here. 89. Oh, good, Nexus. Such a pain in the ass when that stuff happens. Severe thunderstorm watch, number 473. <laughs> I don't think we're going to, I don't think my comedy's on it though. Nope, I'm not on it. No, yes, I am. Yep. Till six o'clock. Wow. Looks like seven o'clock, 90%. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah, it's your energy. Huh? Watch stuff just taking off flying. Yep. I'm gonna prop, prop my uh, tripod up better. I think I'm just gonna put it on, hook it to my windshield. Yeah, believe it or not, you see this, you see this in reverse. Everything's the opposite way. Those clouds are actually going from the right to the left, coming from the southwest. You're looking straight south out this window. Yeah, this camera reverses it. You know, the uh, kayak is facing the other way. Everything's in reverse. There you go, Nexus. Yeah, it's weird, yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, it looks like the everything's moving from the uh, east. It's not, it's weird, yeah, it is. Yeah, crazy. But it takes so long to render these damn. Four K videos. It's only eight percent. Crazy. Daisy staying out longer than I thought. Making a fool of me, Daisy. Just laying outside in the porch. What a bag of peanuts. These are supposed to be 
Cajun. I think they they got the wrong label on. I don't really like. As I get older, I don't like hot stuff, spicy as much as I used to. I remember when I was living down in Florida, those hurricanes damn near put State Farm Insurance out of business. If I was an insurance company, I wouldn't insure anybody there. I just insure people in like Minnesota, Michigan, Ohio. Oh, really? Neil, no kidding. I was reading in that salmon book. It's against the law to have any firearm on a fishing boat. And that was happening. Evidently, these seals like eating these salmon when they spawn. And all they want to do is bite the belly out of them, the fatty part. And once one piece of fish is missing out of like a fillet, the market values in the tank. These seals are smart. They talk about how they'll be waiting for them to come in with the net. And then they'll go on their attack to start fighting the bellies off all of them. Right now, like on the sockeye salmon, just a guy with not even crazy amount of equipment. For the six weeks sockeye salmon season, after bills can make 150 grand in six weeks. Hey, Mary, I just ordered a book that talks about those tugs they have at the Native American fishermen. I never realized that much of the boat was underwater. Get out of here, regular show. How are you feeling, Stephanie? Back to nor normal? Yeah, it's not really like that anymore, Inner Neil. Do you ever get any German handmade marbles?
No, I'm not doing anything. Excuse me. Mary, you got to learn how to read the water. Whole summer gone by and didn't even go get any wild rice. Dang, clink. Oh, good for you, Bank. Oh, okay. Have you ever been to Lauschwa, Germany? Lauschwa? That place is all cleaned out now. That's where they used to make them. I know guys that have been over there for 10 days and not found one damn marble. Because any marble collector knows that that's where the place to go. Oh, Little League Championships. Oh, okay. What's that little town in uh, Pennsylvania? They have the championship. Little League World Williamsport, I think. Yeah, Williamsport, yep. Oh, why, Mary? Why? Why? Read the water on the way down. You couldn't go at a worse time. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Go to those little local mark markets you talk about. Take your GoPro with you. You may get some good storms. Yeah, Canada's good. Why do you like Anchorage, Atlanta? 
Alaska. It's like Detroit. Drugs, crime. You have to be crazy to move there. We're at Montana. Hey, bro. Yeah, today I'm not going to eat much. Just don't feel like messing with it. So damn hot. Can't believe Daisy's sitting on the porch. Oh, wow, Blue. Yeah, I'm like a passive football fan. Yeah, I'd like to watch it. I haven't kept up with it. What's the deal with Aaron Rodgers? Oh, well, hey, Willie. Oh, did they really? I didn't even realize they were playing. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good for you. Hope this damn COVID bullshit doesn't get any worse. Thank you. Yeah, Aspen's nice. Yeah, it's hotter than a bitch here. 88. Yeah, it's bad here too, at least it's, yeah. Florida, yeah. I mean, this reality now is like a science fiction movie. Mass, disease, Houses selling for more than they are listed for, even though there's no good paying jobs. Stimulus money, no nobody to work at jobs. The world is nuts. Oh, is it? Yeah, it is hard to watch. That's one, that's one shit. It's just like the Cleveland Browns. The Daisy wants in now. Yeah, big shot, huh? Yeah, huh? You want that air conditioning, don't you, big shot? Yeah, don't you, big shot? Yeah, I know you figured you did want that, honey. I figured you did. It was hot out there, wasn't it, honey? Huh? Wasn't that pretty hot out there? You got that body all heated up? You got that body all heated up. Good girl. No, I haven't had TV in a while either. I go on and off, but I was thinking of signing up for it again the other day, though. 
I don't know why. It sucks. It's not worth it. I should check into that YouTube TV. I hope Mary keeps reads the water on the way down. I shouldn't have profiled Mary like that. I asked her if she could tell me a secret way of sneaking up on birds. It's not sensitive to other cultures. I'm sorry, Mary. I'm sorry. Hundred and fifty mile an hour winds, god damn. I wish Ollie and Frank lit Nitty lived there. I think a sneeze is two hundred and ten miles an hour. Oh, really, Frisky? Yeah, at Netflix. Those motherfuckers filled me for two years and I didn't even have it. I will never sign up for Netflix. And that was after I canceled my account. But yeah, who did I talk to? Yeah, fuck you. I knew I was fucked then. Do you tell us where the representative you talked to? Yeah, I'm making it up. I just paid you for two years for nothing, right? Such bullshit. Oh, Katrina, wow. They were shooting at the Red Cross helicopter. Oh, Kurt Cobain. I'll tell you, if you were in an airplane today, it'd be bumpy as hell going through those clouds, getting up on top. This is a lot of warm, unstable air today. You have the seatbelt light on the whole time. I might check that YouTube TV out. They keep offering a free thing. What do you do on that YouTube TV? What do you do? Just like put a chip in your, put a stick in your damn uh, big screen TV. How, how's that work? I was watching some old City Confidentials the other night. Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> me. Oh, oh you downloaded on the TV. I don't even know if my TV I can do that with it. Maybe I can. I had that damn Roku, it was sucked. It's always sticking. Oh, okay. Thank you, Coleman. Hey, me, Danny. Oh, thank you. Ryan. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, 
Yeah, you can get fucked, Cookie Crumble. If you ever come over here, there's going to be some more allegations because you won't be around anymore, you dildo. The only serious allegation I know is getting your mother pregnant from anal sex. And that's not true. And I don't think so, old dad. It's not too good a weather. Serious allegations. That was a serious allegation for your mom. And I refuted it successfully. And you were not aborted. Now get lost, loser. And go swat some people. Thank you, Penny. Well, I, I, I'm too far away from the places. No, I don't know. Believe it or not, it's to eat these Cajun peanuts. I'm not shitting you. Yeah, it's to eat these Cajun peanuts causing that. Staying alive, that's what I play before I go to bed by the Bee Gees. No, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I told the lady at the, uh, she hasn't had power two days. I told her I cranked up my generator and watched over two hours of porn. Yeah, Jim Cantori. Jim Cantori. They sure stuck with that guy. You know, the Weather Channel, though, they get pissed people off. They charge too much. Now I don't even know where you find it. Excuse me. It's that stupid uh, Weather Channel wannabe. The girls aren't as good looking. No, I'm guilty. The only thing I was guilty of was banging your mother and your stepsister in a threesome with a blind pig. Yeah. No, you don't have any duty. Get that retard away from the keyboard. Now get lost, loser. Get lost, loser. Serious allegations. Wow. That's really something, isn't it? Oh, thank you. That's a chat, you dumbass. Oh, yeah, they're terrible. Get out of here, loser. Yeah, right, Frisky. And I watch this damn uh, weather radar so much. I love this. Glad we didn't get these storms during the damn fair. It would have really wrecked it. You know, just north of here, it's a lot cooler. Yeah, these thunderstorms are coming. Oh, yeah. Now, if we're getting thunderstorms, I'm going to go out there and switch that camera to real video not time lapse just a thin band of some thunderstorms get out of here connor You're asking too many stupid questions akf no i don't i didn't even check it because i got i have electricity i'm just a self-centered person that only cares if my air conditioner is working and nobody else's. Hey Sheila, how you doing? 
What have you been up to? Hey, the goat's buffering, huh? I'm sorry about that. I'm going to play Staying Alive. Oh, yes, those are good songs that are new. Yeah, sure are. Yep. I think they really are. Serious allegations. <laughs> They're so funny. Yeah, cooler days. I hope so. I hate this hot weather. I'd be so glad when the summer's over. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Were you on that uh, Bobbles thing last night? No, it's 88. Oh, good, you know. You working a lot? Yeah, good idea. Yeah, stupid. Get out of here, Dan, you retard. Tell your mind to check her EPT. Bye-bye, Don. Sorry for any technical difficulties. Oh, you like it? Good. I didn't like it last night, though. I thought it was super boring. Talking about Nitty and Ollie for an hour and a half. Are you kidding me? I hope that's the last one like that. Because if it is, if it isn't, I don't want to go on there anymore. It's so boring. Oh, okay. Yeah. She says she doesn't want drama. Oh, yeah, I was so super bored. And the whole goddamn chat was about drama. I mean, who gives a fuck with either one of those two? I don't get it. Oh, good for you. Oh, that's cool. Well, you didn't miss anything. Oh, yeah, it's just super boring. Who cares what Ollie or Frank Nettie think or do or God damn, man. Oh, my God. I hope this golf course didn't get too messed up. I think it could have. Oh, they will. They sure will, yeah. Stalkers all over. Yeah, Jimi Hendrix, yeah. Oh, wind's really cropping up. Well, I think I'm going to sign off here and go knock out 50 pages of salmon. I might be on later.
These are good chats. These are way better than any of this other stuff. Fuck off. The only person missing is your mom's goddamn gross of prophylactics you took to the blind pig the other night. You're going to be missing if you ever come over here. Make the world a better place. Now get out of here, shitbag. I dare you to show up at my door, doorstep. Sixty-five, sixty-five. Yeah, they're bored. They don't have anything to do. They have no content. Nobody likes them. Fucking weirdos. Because they have no content, Brian. They're weird. Keyboard confidence, that's right. They don't have enough balls to show up here. Yeah, they just have no lines. Nobody want they don't have anything to discuss. They're too stupid. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I like that guy, but honestly, uh, he seems to think that thing's going to be in the water in two weeks, more like two years. That's a hell of a design, though, I'll tell you that. That's a, I never realized those, there was that much of a hull underneath the water. No wonder they, they're driving them around. It's damn near impossible to tip one over. Those were made in, uh, as he said, Manitowoc. I ordered a book on it, actually. I mean, when you got 1938 tugboats being sought after, that really speaks volumes of the design. I'll see you, Penny. Yeah, see you, j -Bow. I mean, no shit. Five tons of ways. Yeah, go to go to Walmart, 14 bucks, probably cheaper now going into fall. And get the wood chips, either ones, mesquite or cherry wood. And get match light charcoal. Yeah, I think it's a pipe dream, but I, hope, I wish the best for him. No, oh, that's all right, Internew. That's cool. All right, Indigo. Yeah, feel inspired. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. All right, you guys have a good day today. I'll be uploading some hour and a half of good audio. Just plug it in and lay your head down in the pillow. All right, Blue. See you, Conan. Thank you, Penny. See you, Mark. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, plus, I mean, there's some of that stuff. It's got to be hard to get parts for. I mean, just to sandblast that hull, I mean, that's 50 feet long. I mean, just the paint's probably three grand. See you, Prisky. All right, Mark. I mean, I've done shit like that before, which is why I'm not doing it now. I can't even finish a bedroom. I'd probably be in the same boat. Take a handful of Prozac, wash it down with a couple of shots of Johnny Walker. And it's like, well, when do you think you're going to have this in the water? Oh, a couple of weeks. You get a depressed guy like me, I'd say probably never, but I'm still working on it. Yeah, no, I know. I know. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Blue. Yep. Yeah. When you've got retired housewives in Denver, Colorado, making statements like this, I got an idea. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, thank you. See you, me, Candy. Yep. Have a great day. Yeah, I know that hole is probably four inches thick. You could drill to China quicker. Yeah, I'll, I'll be on later tonight. I'll, I'll get on late tonight if I have power. Yep. I'm charging every vibrator up for the women around here within the four square mile area. So don't ever say that I'm selfish. Yeah, it's a beautiful boat. I mean, I love that design. I couldn't, I thought it was an economics why they 
for our knowledge. But talking to him, I realized it's uh, staying alive. You know, I'd say that's considerate. Yeah, cool. All right, well, have a good day, you guys. Yeah, I, I, I can take or leave the gummies, to be honest with you. Yeah. All right, you guys have a good day today. Well, that guy's kind of a ladies' man. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, have a good day, you guys. Listen to some Frank Zappa. Listen to how they slaughter Stairway to Heaven. And go watch Tort Albus. Tort Albus. T O R T and then Albus. And listen to Black Dog. No, 75%. No, no power. Nope. Uh uh, most of it. 75%. Yeah. All right. Well, I've got over 39 vibrators charging up for the women around West Branch that are out of power. All sizes. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Yeah, no, I, I've never been out of power just for a couple seconds. Have to keep setting my clock, but uh, Walmart, they're closed. All the fast foods closed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, crazy. Gas station. It's a mess where you get off at 212 because the lights aren't working. And everybody's getting off, not realizing there's no power. There's a backup there you wouldn't believe. Yeah, it's crazy. All right, you guys. So I hope you have a good day. Drink lots of water. Drink Gatorade. Yeah. Storms. Storms, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to sign off here now, Michigan Mike, but I'll talk to you later. No, no disrespect. No, I wish him luck. I just, you know. I mean, you know what I mean? That thing hasn't sailed since 99. I love Pink Floyd. Yeah, I do. Yeah, sure do. Yeah. All right, well, party on, everybody. Have a good day. I'll come on later tonight about 9. All right, see you later, Penny. See you, Michigan Mike. See you, Neff.